What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. So, uh, after looking through what I had available, I figured the lightning fists would be the best bet. Um, you know, it was either that or fire, and, you know, considering I have dark, I figured lightning damage would be the best alternative, because if something's resistant to dark, it's usually not resistant to lightning, and vice versa. So, uh, that's what we're going to be running with. Anyway, let's get rebuffed. We're going to head up top, fight our way through all of the, uh, the bullshit of the level. I think I might need to kill... Yeah, I'm gonna need to kill that thing again to make the ladder reappear. combo. Like, this weapon is definitely clapping the cheeks, but, I mean, at the same time, I feel like it's it's appropriate, you know? Like, even if we look at it from a lore perspective, Twisted Greatsword resembling the Launderer's Sable Church, held uh, by the High Executioner, it's tainted by the blood of the innocent, holds an ominous and wrathful power, and I'm playing a Blood Knight that focuses around blood and dark damage. Like, this is the perfect weapon for my build. It's just, you know, beyond the fact that it claps cheeks, thematically, it's also a fantastic weapon for my build. I think what I might do at the very end, though, given that, um, that, uh, kindled... Kindled Lord of Ash or whatever thing. I think after we get through the DLC and I beat Gale, I may do one final respec just to check out the Pontiff Swords. Like full on, you know, hyper zug zug poise build and go do all the rekindled lords with that. Just see just how much we can break the game. I feel like that would be even stronger uh, than what we're doing now and the Necro because. Those swords, and I mean, I know, you know, sheet DPSs and everything. Like, for example, you know... Yeah, the DPS on this is, is 653. Uh, but it's only dark, and if I were to use something that's that's split... I don't think I have any split weapons right now. Um, you know, if I, if I have something that's split, the sheet DPS... I mean, the sheet DPS for the Pontiff Swords was like 2500. And I know that's not a true number, because... You know, you gotta consider that you're you're going through multiple resistances and whatnot. Um, but that whole the blades of the tyrant thing, it still looked like those just absolutely clapped.
Or like a, yeah, okay. So I was like, I don't remember having to go down there immediately. This is what I was looking for. Yeah, Rain of Blood isn't as, uh, I think I got spoiled. Cause like, Rain of Blood is like, you know, when you're fighting multiple enemies, this shows that nothing remains, but... Like, compared to Miasma and Creeping Rot... I think I just, I had access to such insanely powerful AoEs that... By comparison, other AoEs just, they're not gonna feel that strong. usually get ambushed by uh, that thing around here. There it is. I definitely think I'm liking the, uh, the lingering dragon crest approach a lot more. So we're just focusing on doing what we're able to do damage wise. It could just be that all these things are resistant to bleed, too. Some of the bleed damage I'm doing, it's like, like when we were fighting the, uh, not the boss big wolf, but the one that comes running down from the hill, the, basically the first one we encounter. Oh, uh, I thought it's all the ladder. Uh, while we were fighting that thing, I was seeing bleed procs go off. But they were for like 170 damage, which is, you know, absolutely nothing. Yeah, when, when you know, stuff you're fighting has 1800 health, uh, 170 is, you know, garbage. Especially when we're playing a, uh, a bleed build and it's supposed to be a large chunk of our, our damage potential. But I am really curious to see how well they implement the blood magic in Elden Ring. 
I know in like the spell showcase I didn't uh, I didn't show it off in the spell showcase because I didn't realize it but like so uh, you know a lot of the stuff in Elden Ring you can hit the button multiple times to charge up the spell or like you know you can either you can hold it like similar to how I have like a heavy attack or I have like a charged heavy you that you can do that with a lot of spells in Elden Ring but there was one spell in particular that instead of it functioning like that it had a uh, it had a, a casting based build up so you had to you had to press press the button to cast three separate times and basically just repeating the cast like cast 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 uh, the item itself would or the, or the spell would build up into stronger tiers and do more damage I didn't even realize that when I was like going through and testing all the spells because that's you know brand new uh, brand new mechanical thing. Yeah, hopefully the blood magic. I think it'd be really cool if there were spells where it like it didn't cost your FP bar at all. It just pulled directly from your health. Right now, it looks like it's going to be a combination of both, just based on what we had in the network test. But we'll see. I mean, obviously that was you know a network test is a network test. It's not nothing is set in stone. Everything is subject to change. That's the thing I found funniest is like there's so many people that they thought the network test was like the full game. People were like, how, how are you playing this? I thought it doesn't come out yet. Being like, oh, this looks like it's going to be too easy. And it's like, bro, it's, it's a network test. This is like, literally they make it the most approachable of any version of a Souls game. It's the same for Bloodborne, it's the same for Dark Souls 3. Uh, do I still have tears up? I did not. Now, I am glad that we, we did Necro at the start, though, because just based on how much damage uh, we're doing now, I mean, this isn't bad, but I think if we had played the... Uh I think if we had started as Blood Knight and had played a bunch of the game as that, uh, I think we would have gotten bored. Because, like, I mean, this is, this is cool. There's some really cool spells here. We're doing respectable damage, but you know, obviously, the the, the majority of our current playstyle is just melee. And that's it. Um, which, you know, I don't know. That was one of the things I liked about playing Necro. Like, even though it was a little bit of a struggle bus at the start, you know, always testing out new spells, testing out new summons, but kind of figuring out what what is the combo here, what's going to work well.
gonna need to put on a uh, I was just thinking, have I gotten a single parry this entire playthrough? Maybe like one? Onyx Blade, same as it uh, always is. to the next level. Alright. I'm gonna switch up and use these fists for a little bit just to, just to do something different. Got a little sketchy for a second there.
Really liking the, uh, the frostbite changes that we're getting in Elden Ring. Talking about uh, upcoming changes. Whereas, like, in this game, frostbite is, you know, like, a set amount of damage and usually stamina damage. Um, it's one of the bigger changes of, of Elden Ring is they're making it so when you inflict frostbite on an enemy, it increases the damage they take from all sources by, like, a set amount. So it'll be a really, really good debuff tool. It was like a 15% damage increase. I mean, that's pretty much why I'm doing Convergence. This is, you know... Elden Ring beta wrapped up. I have souls in the mind. This is the, the closest thing. I really just want Elden Ring. Just, just give it to me now. Okay. Recast some stuff. I don't have the my BFP for it. I do find it funny though that people have gotten uh, so used to like Dark Souls mods where FP regenerates that that was actually like one of the the most common complaints I saw. People are like, "Why well, don't know?" That for their for Elden Ring at least they're like, "Why doesn't FP regenerate?" And it's like it it never has. Like FP is never it has never regenerated. That's never been a thing. Why no region? I mean, and ultimately it's because, you know, regen makes things silly. Like, just look at this playthrough, for example, when, uh, when the cost of, of spells isn't a concern, eventually you reach Godhead. Isn't there like a, uh, a series of drop downs right around here I could do? I think it's there. Oh, that's the guy. It's him. Maybe it's right here. Maybe this is my first drop. Alright, he fell. Oh, that's a... can't get up from there.
not messing around. I was tickling him with the fists. It's like, this ain't gonna work. Hey, it's another... See that one? Conquer Stormfronts. From Conquered Stormfronts, your devotion leads you on to Ash and Abyss. Conquered Stormfronts. Conquered Stormfronts makes me think, um... Nameless King, Fair and Firstborn, whatever we're calling it. Ash and Abyss is maybe the next DLC. Take this. Oh, you know what it is? I gotta go this way and drop down to then take the route back up top to pass through. Yeah. Trying to think where the next bonfire is. All right, there was the hidden thing. Well, let me get that, let me go this way. I think this is the shortcut back to a uh, big old blade of Rosaria. Oh my God. Oh, he fucked up though. Parry this, you casual. Man, I'd be so disappointed if I was that NPC. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, parry, switched to the dagger, got ready for the critical, and just didn't do it. Just like, ooh, man, that, that sucks. That sucks big time. Yeah, so made it back, though. Um, so let's wrap here, I suppose. we've At this point, we've done most of this area, which this is why I did uh, Arc Dragon Peak in addition to this DLC is blood, just because it's not its not exactly the longest area to get through, you know? You, you can burn through it pretty fast. Um, so next episode, we'll make our way down to see what they've replaced Pyromancer Boy with. Um, after that is Freed, and then we have a respec, and we tackle the last DLC. So stay tuned, and I will catch you all soon with some more.